Chip and I are here at our new house in Fresno, California that's modeled after a Maybeck classic called the Matthewson Home. We're gonna expand beyond our last video where we talked about setting up a program and analyzing the site and drawing a site plan. The next step will involve bubble diagrams and circulation. Stick with us here as we explain that all to you. If you missed step one in designing your own garden slash landscape, watch step one before you watch this video of step two. First of all, we're gonna have Chip do some filming today. You can vote again who's a better photographer, Chip or Brendan. Chip, go to it, get some good shots. So step two is really bubble diagrams and I offer that as an option for you. Some people might want to skip the bubble diagram stage, but it's the classic way to design a garden, which is you take that site plan that you've analyzed and you have all your list of your program, which your program means what you want to include, and then you start drawing bubbles to show where all of these things would work the best, and you kind of play with the bubbles, you move them around, you consider different things, you know, the driveway here, the main walk here, the pool here. In other words, you have no mental blockages. You're able to do this freely and easily and quickly because you don't have to draw any forms. So this is a way to transition into the hardest part, which is putting form to all of this, to the circulation and such. So if you're drawing just bubbles, that should kind of free you up to be creative and to consider many options. One of the things you're considering as you're doing these bubble diagrams is form follows function, which is a phrase I don't want to say old and tired, I agree with it completely, um, but it's a little bit obvious to me. Uh, but I like to emphasize that in landscaping because a lot of time you see landscape designs that are more concerned about, say, making it look like Hawaii or making it look like the mountains as the first consideration. So form follows function tells you that the first consideration should be the function of it, how you're gonna use it, and that goes in with what I've preached on this channel about making landscaping useful, allowing it to improve your life. Lewis Sullivan, the father of skyscrapers, is given credit with the first form follows function utterance in an essay he wrote. Frank Lloyd Wright was his student, and Frank Lloyd Wright summarized what Lewis Sullivan said with that phrase, form follows function. Frank Lloyd Wright, had a whole career of form follows function. And it also goes nicely with a lot of other landscape axioms that I really believe in and promote, like uh, Thomas Church wrote a book called Gardens Are For People. We want people to be able to use gardens in a way that benefits their life. One of my other favorites, Lawrence Halprin, who said, the great challenge for the garden designer shouldn't be to make the garden natural, but to make the garden so the people in it will feel natural. Three very famous luminaries in the world of architecture and landscape architecture uttered those and they all mean the same thing and they're all something I really believe in and so as you start doing your bubble diagrams that's one of the reasons you do bubble diagrams is to make sure that this de design you're coming up with meets your needs. Bubble diagrams include circulations, but instead of drawing the shape of the walks, you'll draw a bubble and show, you know, here's how I get from this space to this space. You can see what we've done here and how we've gotten started. So where we're standing is directly in line with the only pedestrian gate that leads you to the front door. So you'd have kind of a bubble around the pedestrian entrance and you'd have some kind of bubble around the walk that leads us to the front door. We would have a big bubble. We're gonna build a lap pool and there's not many places on the lot where it would fit. So this would have a big bubble where the pool's gonna go. We'd have a big bubble for some kind of extension of the house out into the garden with some type of meeting space. In this case, we have an arbor over it. And so that would also be a part of the bubble diagram, which is made necessary by uh, the fact that we want shade and some kind of protection. We might have had our arbor, our main arbor, somewhere completely different, although since this house faces north and it has these 
double French doors. It's pretty obvious that you want that to lead out to something that wasn't a difficult decision. And your bubble diagrams, in many cases, are pretty simple. As we go around, you can see how the circulation is. This was all on this first bubble diagram. We just had this as a big bubble showing, you know, how you get to these French doors to the master bedroom and to the guest bedroom. And then we've got like a little onsen that we wanted to work in here somewhere in onsen being a Japanese mineral bath. We knew we wanted that. So we played with bubble diagrams of where the onsen would be and the relationship between circulation and the onsen. So this is before the onsen has any form. We're just trying to figure out where we're gonna put it in relation to these French doors, in relation to each room. This was not part of the new construction, but we tied it in by plastering it the same as the new house. This was a 650 square foot guest house. And on the back side of it, we did a, its own separate courtyard, which uh, again, we would just use bubbles to determine where we wanted that. And the circulation isn't real complicated because there's not a lot of room. But again, we would show that in the sense of a bubble. A lot of the bubbles are self-evident. We continue around. We just did this new screen. We're gonna grow a vine on it to extend a very short uh, neighbor fence so that we can increase privacy for them and for us. You would have analyzed that fence and its shortcomings in the site analysis. Probably in a bubble, you would circle that fence and you would say extend fence, but you wouldn't know how you were gonna do it yet. Since it's so narrow and there's not a lot of opportunity here for much in the way of design, but still you're identifying it. You're identifying how you get into the garage and how you go out to the street and where, uh, where the gate could be for the cars. And you're identifying a main courtyard area in the front. Again, with bubbles, you're aware of easements and such, which is on your analysis of the site. So you know where the front fence could be. In this design, we've created kind of a, a unique use of fencing to where it's all a backyard. You know, it's all accessible and screened from the street. We're trying to uh, make gardens are for people. We're trying to make it as useful as possible. So we're gonna have seating in here. But at this stage, this would just be a, a bubble. Chip's bringing up the rear there, filming things very carefully. Come on over here, Chip. Then we're back around to the main pedestrian gate and we look at how we're going to get from the gate to the street and we look at where guests will park that's a bubble we don't have it all in yet but we started the process and then we're back on this main walk which is leading us to the front door i hope you get the idea that bubble diagram part of the the design is really very simple and we hope it opens your mind to be able to go to the next step. In my opinion, the hardest step is to take those bubble diagrams and give them form. But if you start with the bubbles, that should give you some hints. Have you gotten all the best shots? You wanna come over here? <laughs> oh, okay, 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 he's ready. I, get, I think he got all the best shots. I'm eager to see how they compare to your shots. So hopefully this was helpful and we'll continue this series. Like it if it was worth liking. Comment uh, below and subscribe and tell all your acquaintances to do the same. So if you're stuck in the process, you go back to the program, your original list of uses and your original analysis of the site. If you know exactly how you're gonna use it and what you're trying to accomplish and your constraints and your opportunities, then that should give you some ideas 